Hey everyone, join in. I am making a hummus today and you guys know I love making hummus. Uh, it tastes so much better than store-bought. So encouraging you to get out your food processor and make hummus with me today. And this one is not actually in Drina's Kind Kitchen. Um, I've been making a lot from Drina's Kind Kitchen. This one is on my site and I'm just pulling up the recipe on my iPad because I don't remember exactly <laughs> what's in it. Uh, after a number of recipes, you start to like forget <laughs> what's in what recipe. And I've done like hundreds and hundreds of recipes now. So uh, referring to my recipe on my site, I'm just gonna get my hair tied back because um, I don't want to get it in the food. That's me with my wonky British accent. Gosh, what am I delivering to you guys today? You're not looking for that, are you? Okay, so we're making this spiced sweet potato hummus. I'm gonna see if I can show you the photo on my iPad. We're gonna make it so you'll see it finished, but it's always nice to see the photo. Oh, come on, here we go. So the link for this recipe, there it is, guys. Ooh, 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 gosh, one day I'll really figure this out. Oh my heavens, there we go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there it is, guys. Sweet potato hummus, and it has some like has some um, kick to it, a little bit of kick, and I just need to brighten my screen because I look really dark from where I am. Um, and I don't think I'm able to do it, but hopefully I don't look as dark too, guys. Okay, so starting this recipe with, now, first of all, guys, do you make your own hummus? Do you make it in big batches? Because that's what I want you to start doing. If you're making hummus at home, make a huge old batch and you can freeze it. Yes, you can freeze it. I tell people this all the time and they're always like, what, you can freeze hummus? And I'm like, yeah, you can freeze hummus. So I did another video about making a basic, like creamy hummus, kind of like your standard go-to hummus. And that one is also on YouTube. You can link over to find it. Um, I didn't put my YouTube channel there, but uh, in the description, but if you go to YouTube and search my name, you're gonna find my channel and you can make the basic hummus. And this one today, is really creamy and has a little hint of sweetness from the sweet potatoes. And then it has all those accents of flavors and spices, which are really great. So we're gonna get to making it. Now, if you're watching, please join in and tell me if you've made your own hummus. Um, have you tried this one, the sweet potato hummus? And um, yeah, join in. Let me know what's going on in your part of the world. Are you batch cooking today? A lot of people batch cook on Sundays. Um, and I will also mention, oh, that's what I wanted to mention. So I've drained off. So I've started with, um, I, I'm doubling this recipe. So I've started with two cans of beans in my food processor. I have another two cans drained in, is that two cans? Two cans drained, yes, in my um, strainer here. And I've saved some of the aquafaba, which is also just known as bean brine, um, and usually from chickpeas or white beans. And I've saved some of that. There it is there. Yummy, right? It does not look yummy. <laughs> but as we know, it has been discovered, some um, very clever person discovered that that brine works very much like an egg white. And so you can use it in recipes where egg whites might be used. And I use it in a couple of recipes in the book where you wouldn't necessarily think egg whites would be used, but it works really well. And that is one of the, that one of those recipes is my potato croutons in the book. Have you tried them? They're yummy. And the aquafaba is used in these croutons to help the seasonings hold on to the potato, like to cling on to the potato. That's what I'm doing, like trying to show you how it should cling on. And then, and you can see those potato croutons 
are in this smoky kale Caesar. Yummy, yummy. And I also use it for the bread and croutons. So that's literally using, you know, all the scraps of bread that you have and seasoning them up with um, the seasonings that I offer and some other ideas and then adding the aquafaba to toss it up and then bake it. And the aquafaba helps the seasoning stay on the bread or the potatoes. And then you have really yummy croutons that are oil free. Ta-da. So save a little bit of the aquafaba. You really don't need very much like you need a tablespoon for the recipe. So this is way more than I need. Lots of people joining in. Hi, Barbara and Melissa. Fear in Florida. Oh, I bet it's nice and warm there. It's rainy here. Hi, Melissa. And from East Van, I have someone joining. I Apple, I think it says 369 from East Van. Hey, cool. Batching lentil soup and okra. It's nice, cozy winter food. We need it, right? Like it's already so cold here. Is today the first day of fall? No, I think it's a uh, couple of days. And some squash cooking. You are totally into the fall foods. I hear you though, right? It's gotten cold here. It turned to fall so quickly. I feel like we're going to get another burst of summer still, but it's it's been cold. And Beth saying she's made hummus. It wasn't as creamy as I like. Okay, so we'll talk about that. And Marianne, batch prepping, nice. Um, made, why am I not using my readers? Do I have them here? Shoot, I don't have them here. Uh, made, is that Jaruti hummus? What is that? What is that? Please share what that is. I've never tried sweet potato hummus. Good. So I would love to know, Marion, what that kind of hummus is. Um, okay, so Marcel is asking about, do you need to take the skins off of chickpeas for hummus? We're going to talk about that too. And Barbara's bought my book. Thank you. I hope you're enjoying it. Oh, she doesn't have it just yet. I hope you're enjoying it. And Melissa is also joining in. Nice to see all of you. And we're going to talk about those things and hummus. So first off, if you want a really creamy hummus, I think that was Marcella. No, it was Marion. Someone, whoever asked about the very creamy hummus, please go to my YouTube channel and search. I should have put the link there. I will after the other hummus recipe because I explain how to make your hummus really creamy without oil. Okay. So one tip is you've got to blend it a long time. You've got to get it in that food processor and really, really, really <laughs> process it longer than you think. And a tip that I do, a trick that I add at the end, I don't add water to my hummus usually, or maybe just a tiny amount, like a tablespoon or two. And instead I add ice cubes. So I saw this tip, I think it was on Food 52. It's not my, it's not my idea. I saw it, I think it was Food 52, that adding ice cubes as you're pureeing the hummus it does something. It helps break up the ingredients really nicely and makes it really, really creamy. So a couple of tips there, and I'm going to share some more as we go. Okay. And so um, does aquafaba add any texture to the hummus, Melissa, or to the croutons? I'm not sure what you mean. I rinse off all the chickpea brine, bean brine when I make my hummus. So let's get to it. So we're not going to be too long. Okay. So I've got two, got to plug in this guy. And I put a link for this processor as well because people ask me a lot about this one. It's a 16 cup processor, so it's big, right? Really big. Um, well, you know, it's not massive, but it's bigger than some. Some are usually, I, I think the average processor is 12, crop, uh, 12 cups, and then there's 14 cups, and this is 16 cups. And I love this because I can double, triple batch hummus, I can double burger recipes, I can double. Um, Anything that I want to put in here, like if I'm making, say, um, little date um, nut balls, you know, like you call them bliss balls or whatever, I can always make a bigger batch in this processor. So I love that that um, function or functionality of this processor being a little bit bigger. Okay, and we're adding some garlic. Now with garlic, as I say, if you love garlic, and you know you want a garlicky hummus, go ahead and add more than I call for. I tend to go fairly conservative on garlic because my crew doesn't like too much in it, um, and I don't either. So I'm going to use like a medium, 
roughly a medium clove per batch. So I'm going to uh, add a little bit more for the two. So what I'm going to do now is puree this amount of beans and the garlic with, I've got lime juice here and one seed that is bouncing around in here. Seriously. Okay. Get that guy out. You know, if a seed got in the hummus, it wouldn't be the end of the world, right? But there, um, <laughs> it's clinging on. So I, again, doubled the lime juice. So I use lime juice in this one instead of lemon juice. Let's puree this first and then I'll explain. Because um, the spices that I use in here, I feel like lime juice is better suited to it. So I'm using like chipotle um, hot sauce and a little chili powder. And it's kind of has a slight Southwest feel. And in those recipes, you use lime juice more than lemon for acid. So if you don't have limes, you can use lemon, but limes really accent it nicely. And yes, that's me tipping my food processor because sometimes I don't want to scrape it down. And if I just tip it, it, it moves out some of that stuff from the sides of the bowl and gets it moving a little better. Um, okay, and now I'm adding some sweet potatoes. So I already had some sweet potato cooked. Ooh, there I go. And I'm just taking the skins off. I bake these whole with the skins on on a parchment sheet. All that information is in Drina's Kind Kitchen in the FAQ and find the how-tos. I don't think I have quite, yes, I think I have about two, two cups. So the recipe calls for one cup, but I'm adding, I'm doubling it, so. And uh, if you have yellow sweet potatoes, that would work fine too. So I just piece it into the cup and that's like, okay, that's a cup in. And um, these, I did a video on these as well. These zip tops, really handy for refrigerating things or in the freezer or in the cupboard. So I have a link to those there if you want to look into those. I'm late to the game on these. I think a lot of you already know about them. I did not. And I love how you don't have to find a lid for it because I have a cupboard full of mismatched, you know, containers and lids. And I go through it from time to time to try and clear it out, but it's much more convenient to have, you know, that one piece there. So this is not sweet potato. This is delicata squash that I also roasted up the other day. And since I'm a little shy in my measure, I'm just going to add some of that. Sweet potato is sweeter and preferable for the recipe, but there we go. So and that's a cup. And then we also have, I have to check my recipe on my iPad too, make sure I have everything and that I need. We have some tahini. A lot of people ask me to use something instead of tahini. One thing I will mention right off the bat is try a different brand of tahini, <clears throat> excuse me, because they vary so much in flavor and some of them are very nutty, but some are quite bitter. And you get a really nice brand of tahini. This one is good, but I've bought even better brands than this that have a much milder flavor. And if you go to my site, again, drainaburton.com and search tahini, I have a post that offers some um, varieties, li uh, links to brands that are really mellow and have that like really buttery flavor that's delicious. So how much am I adding here? Yeah, that's what I thought, two tablespoons. So another two. And if you really don't want to use it or you're allergic to sesame, then I'd suggest maybe peanut butter here because it would work well with the um, seasonings or maybe cashew butter. It's gonna be, you know, Peanut butter is going to have a more pronounced flavor, but maybe you'll like that. And then you could use a raw cashew butter would work really well here if you don't want to use peanut butter. I see some questions coming in and I'm not keeping up with them. Sorry, guys. So I will answer them after. So we're going to get this whirring and 
I need some seasoning. So we need some salt. If you don't use salt and you don't want to use salt, then, you know, you know your palate's adjusted, so you don't have to. But I use a teaspoon of salt in the batch, which is not, you know, an extraordinary amount. But you could certainly reduce it if you want. And we need some chili powder. Is that chili powder? Yeah. And I've got like a half teaspoon to a teaspoon of chili powder. So I give you the option to use more or less depending on the you know, preferences in your household. I will mention as well, I used, in the recipe, I typically use kidney beans and chickpeas. I didn't mention that. Today I'm using white beans and chickpeas. And the reason being is, A, we have white beans and chickpeas. B, I'm a little sensitive to kidney beans right now, so I'm not using them. So this is a really nice substitute, white beans. I might add that to the recipe, just, um, update the recipe with that information. And this is going to sound wonky, but we're adding a little bit of cinnamon. But the cinnamon adds that little something in the background that goes, hmm, there's something interesting here that's not chili powder. What, what is that? And it plays off the chili powder in a really nice way. All space is also a really nice option to use there. Um, and I'm not, oh, I'm not using chipotle in here, but I'm going to add some today. So this is Tabasco chipotle hot sauce, and I really like it. And if you don't have it, you can use chip chipotle powder, which I actually find is a lot spicier than this hot sauce. Um, it adds a smoky sweetness, or sorry, a sweet smokiness. <laughs> Let's get that the other way. Sort of a sweet, spicy smokiness. Sweet, smoky spice. There we go. It adds a sweet, smoky spiciness. That's what it is. Okay. And I'm going to add some ice cubes. I'm not adding water to this. This time I'm adding ice cubes. Oh. Update the recipe with that too. I dig in and taste and add any extra seasonings that I want. Usually I add a little more lime juice. Um, I've got some of these Mary's crackers. I'm just going to try it. Okay, definitely needs more lime juice. Definitely. So I thought I was a bit short with the lime juice, a little shy of what I would. Anyhow, that's normal in my kitchen. I'm always dropping things and making a mess so may as well do it with you right so i'm gonna just add more limes sometimes limes are really like hard to get the juice out but they have no seeds whereas lemons are like chock full of seeds here we go so I think my recipe calls for about um, a quarter, close to a quarter cup of lime juice. So I think I had about a third cup. I really needed more. There. And I don't have this in the recipe, but I'm going to add this as well. A little bit of lime zest. So if you have organic limes, I zest it before you juice it. And this lime zest adds so much flavor. It just pops the recipe, pops the flavor of the lime and the smoky, spicy flavors makes it taste so good. And then the last thing, which I'm only going to add a little bit because 
Not everyone in the family loves it is some cilantro. Totally optional. If you hate cilantro, do not add it. Obviously, don't add it. But again, it works with the flavor combinations here. So we'll open that. <laughs> And the more I'm pureeing it, I know that's really boring to just watch it puree, sorry. But the more I puree it, the creamier it's getting. Sometimes we don't process it long enough. And I'm gonna give it another blitz. So when I get off the video from you guys, I'm actually going to process this a little bit more and make it even creamier, but I don't want to keep processing it the whole time. But look, it's nice and creamy now. It's going to get creamier when I process it more. If you want even creamier, um, you could add another tablespoon or so of tahini and add maybe another ice cube and just keep or two and just keep processing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, the lime zest really, really adds a lot to it. Like, I don't know why I didn't have that in the recipe in the first place, but I'm putting it in there. I think I just forgot. Um, so I'm going to process this more. I'm going to add another ice cube or two, I think. And I might add just a little bit more lime juice again, maybe another pinch of salt. So, you know, every time you make a dish, make it as you want to make or make it usually as the recipe calls for and then taste and adjust. So if you want a little more flavor, you can add more chili powder. You can add more chipotle. Um, I'm actually going to add a little more chipotle. If you want more acid, you can add more lime juice, some black pepper if you want. Um, but it's very delicious and creamy. And this now... Like, look at how big this batch is, right? Look at that. That's big batch of hummus. So if you were to buy that amount in a store, <laughs> you'd be spending probably about $50 on hummus. Seriously, right? You know, those little containers, they cost about 4 or $5 for a little container of hummus. And they don't taste great. They have, uh, usually they have a lot of oil not as much chickpeas and tahini and they have that preservative in there that secret citric acid that really to me is noticeable and i don't like store-bought hummus for that reason um so make it at home and you know we had four cans of beans here some sweet potato this probably cost us mm, five to seven dollars to make depending on what kinds of beans you use and how much you spend on beans sweet potatoes themselves are pretty cheap limes right? Versus making it, buying all those hummus in, in the store and you're probably spending, you know, well, you wouldn't go and buy that much hummus, but you know what I'm saying. Um, and so someone asked about peeling chickpeas. Good heavens, if we had to peel chickpeas, we would never make hummus, right? Like that is incredible amount of work. I would, I've never done it and I would never do it. Um, I don't think the stores are doing that. And that's not why it's creamy. I think those brands, it's not the stores, but I think the brands are using machinery that are um, higher powered to puree at a higher speed and also adding oil. And that's what's making it creamy. It's not the peels. If you want to peel them, I mean, go for it. But that's a, just a lot of work. Get a good processor, puree more than you think. Um, adding a can of white beans also makes hummus nice and creamy. If you're only using chickpeas, cooking chickpeas from your own, from your, um, own, from dry and cooking them till they're really soft. That also helps make hummus creamy and, um, a really good tahini and then ice cubes at the end. You got the tips. That's how to do it. Okay. So make your hummus and 
I'm going to spruce this up a little bit more, like I said, but go to the links up in the description to get the recipe and then save some aquafaba to make those croutons. I'll show those again. Don't know where they are. There, are. potato ones. Mm -mm. Make those croutons. And um, yeah, I'll be back. I was going to do a chocolate cookie recipe today. And then I really wanted to make hummus. And I'm like, okay, I'll make the hummus. I'll save the chocolate for another day, right? Um, I mean, maybe I'll still make something. But I don't think I'm going to come back on the video today. So hope you make that. I think I said everything I wanted to say um, about it. I'll check the questions after and reply to any other questions you have, okay? So you guys have a really good day. And um, yeah, yeah. Just have fun making it and season it, you know, a little more that you want, um, but be confident with it, right? You can make it great, okay? Have a great day, guys. Blessings to all of you, and I'll see you soon.